21 AC. Just call lighting on this dude one time and cast it one more time to destroy this imp with more damage one more time just like that and all the spells of level 6 so it's like infinity magic build hail and magic adventures welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3 you asked me to make dark urge build so here it is the dark urge i almost finished to make build for every class and subclass on my channel and honestly, Dark Urge is just your character who got his own story. And you can change appearance and class and fully customize your character when you're playing him. But I don't have Storm Sorcery guide yet. So I will make two builds for Dark Urge today. They will be starting with Dark Urge as he is. So basically Dragonborn, who got only base racial movement speed, with White Dragonborn who got this frost brush and resistance to cold damage. We're getting the sorcerer class with storm sorcery subclass and this will give us ability to fly when we making any spells from level 1 and so on. One build storm sorcerer from level 1 to level 12 and in second one we'll dip a little bit into multi-classes. So let's go as sorcerer we need to pick four cantrips and we want to have firebolt, shocking gasp, mage hand and minor illusion. So basically two utility cantrips, one melee spell with lightning damage, and we are storm sorcerer, we like lightning damage, and fireball. Then we're picking two spells, and we will try to keep our origin and uh, class subclass futures. So while we can go for magic missiles, of course, we, we will be focusing on cold and lightning damage today, on mobility and battlefield control. So it will be ice knife and thunder wave. We can't pick any background, and our background gives us proficiency in medicine and intimidation. And for our skill proficiencies, we add in into arcana and insight. And just like that, we're not too proficient. We got only four skills with no bonuses, and every other skill got some bonuses at least. And yeah, athletics minus one. Sorry, athletics. We're playing sorcerer after all. For this, Dark Ush, complete a sorcerer build we going 14 into dexterity 15 in constitution with plus one 10 intelligence 10 wisdom and 14 in charisma with plus two just like that our darkush is ready to go on level two a sorcerer you gain in spell slots and sorcery points that you can use to gain spell slots or use your meta magic so it's class passes we gain in meta magic and we want to pick twin spell and distance spell distance spell will increase range of our magic and give us ability to use melee magics as range magics with 9 meter range. Meta magic twin spell gives ability to target two creatures instead of one with spells that can do damage to only one creature. For example, like uh, fire bolt, cantrip, and yeah, you can use it on cantrips too. So for our spells, as sorcerer, you learn new spells every level, and you got ability to pick from large variety of spells but you can pick only one and you can forget some spells so you can replace if you don't need some spells for first spell we pick a witch bolt and we continue on our journey to level 3 so level 3 coming with level 2 spell slots and of course access to level 2 spells for level 2 spell we pick a misty step it's nice to this step it uses only bonus action and help you reposition yourself while storm sorcerer got nice mobility sometime you want to use misty step instead and you got one more meta magic and you want to use quickened spell of course just like that let me show you this in action so as level 3 sorcerer you can create your sorcery points from your spell slots or vice versa you can create spell slots so it depends on your play style and i recommend to doing it before the battle for example if you don't need all spell slots and you think you better use your sorcery points then create sorcery points so you can use your spell slot of first level to create one sorcery point and just like that we created our sorcery points. For those of you who don't know how it works, basically you have cantrips, which is like spells that you can use as much as you like. For example, this firebolt is cantrip and you can cast it every turn. But you got spells, for example, lace, like ice knife and ice knife is level 1 spell slot spell. And you can cast it so you will throw your ice knife and it will shatter and create ice just beneath it and around it and when you cast it it will use your spell slot and you got only four spell slots of first level but you can upcast your spells so for example if you don't have any spell slots of first level you can use spell slot level two 
and it will be more powerful on most of the spells. For example, if you use Ice Knife and go to Ice Knife level 2, as you can see, every upcasted spell will have 1d6 called damage, just like that. So let's go into action. So, third level Dark Ush, what you can do? You can basically use your Kentip as Minor Illusion to distract enemies and you can place this illusion and as you can see every enemy is distracted but not only not on not this one and that's totally okay and as sorcerer you want to go backline instead of frontline of course let your allies to tank for yourself and while enemies distracted it's kind of doing nothing actually but it changes the line of sight so you can use it if you need to sneak up behind them so what is your like game plan and how we combine these abilities first of all you want to cast your ice knife of course on your enemies or even you can cast it on the ground so you can cast and focus your enemy it's like best idea to do so because it's doing 1d10 piercing damage and then it's adding 2d6 cold damage very large damage but you can cast it on the ground just like that so that's our idea how we do it and we're making this icy surface beneath our enemies and as sorcerer you can use your meta magic quicken spell to cast any spell as bonus action so you can cast two spells in a turn and you can use this sorcery points to even cast fire bolt for example on your enemy just like that and after you cast it fireball all ice became water so just like that on the next turn you can use a shocking gasp or witch bolt and it will create electrified water and inflict additional damage to your enemies so that's like our main combination second combination we got from our white dragon so we can use our frost brush you can use it once per long crest so use it wisely but if you use it as you can see we will freeze water again so if you we don't want to make this surface electrified we can make again this surface as icy surface uh, and we can run around it force enemy to go in on this ice and if they fail their safe throws they will fall like this gitanki and yeah we can just unfreeze this stuff and we can use shocking grasp for example to make it electrified and everyone who's standing on electrified area will take damage and last but not least we got this witch bolt and this will bind us with the target and we can use the spell every turn without using spell slot on same target just like that and if enemies come nearby you you can just use your chunder wave to throw them away just like that oh my god that was really dark urge stuff. So let's level up. We get additional cantrips. You can use utility like Deathstrick Lights, Light, or just Ray of Frost to have more icy options. For spell, again, maybe you need to shove some enemies. Chandra Wave is nice and great spell. It's doing nice damage. It pushes away enemies and creatures and objects, but it uses con save, constitution saving throw from your enemies. And if enemy got high constitution, it's hard to shove them with this stuff. But maybe enemies got high constitution but low strength. So Gust of Wind comes in their place. That's nice spell that you can shove enemies with and it requires different saving throw. So for our feat of choice, first of all we're picking just basic ability improvement and making our charisma higher. Just like that. On level 5 additional spells from level 3. And level 3, our main spell of choice is Lightning Bolt, just crazy damage spell. And we continue to level 6. On level 6, most important stuff is additional subclass features. And we are now resistant to Lightning and Chunder damage. And whenever we cast something, enemies nearby get an additional 3 Lightning or Chunder damage. On level 6, we get in this Chunder Wave and Gust of Wind just from our subclass. So we can replace them now. And now we need to pick spells correctly. So we can pick Hasta, it's like very cool spell and we can replace some spells so we don't need this gust of wind anymore for example and we can pick wherever you like actually nice pick would be a counter spell it's nice to have this as a reaction so you can fight other magical creatures and we get into level 7 where we get additional spells again we continue in our zem and we pick in ice storm to keep electric and ice spells in our arsenal and we change in this chunder wave because we got it from our subclass don't forget it and we're changing it to Polymorph. It's like nice control spell to make your enemies into ships. Sorcerer level 8. You're getting one more spell. Now you can pick 
exactly whatever you like. Great invisibility is nice pick to make yourself or other creatures invisible. And we get additional feet. And right now on level 8 we want to pick Elemental Adept. And we want Elemental Adept Lighting, so enemies can't resist our lighting damage. And we are really scary Storm Sorcerer. And we now get into level 9, we get an additional spell, and now we get spells from level 5. From level 5 we want to pick Cone of Cold, and we want to replace, and I'm replacing it with Hold Monster. Just like that. Hold Monster is a nice controlling spell against monsters, and especially monsters with low wisdom. And most poster monsters will have low wisdom. On level 10 you get additional cantrips, it's done. Don't matter what you pick for spells, you can pick utility ones, like uh, Detect Thoughts, for example, and you get access to one more meta magic. Nice meta magic is a subtle spell because it will allow you to cast spells when you're silenced. So basically you can cast whenever you like. And we can continue to level 11. And we get new subclass future, Storm's Fury. When we are hit by a melee attack, we deal an 11 lightning damage to attacker and potentially pushing them away. It's nice to have. So for level 6 spells, of course, Chain Lighting is like main damaging spell in the whole game. And we're getting to level 12, of course. And for level 12... It's nice to have, for example, a globe of invulnerability to just be immune to all damage. Maybe you will need it. And last but not least, we're getting ability improvement and maxing out our charisma. It's our main ability to cast in spells, just like that. So main abilities and ideas how you play it. Main ability will be call lighting and it requires concentration. So basically you're calling your lighting and make sure to try and upcast it as much as possible. So if you don't want and you're not plan planning to use chain lighting, which is basically creating lighting, and this lighting goes through all enemies in large area. What's the problem? You can use it only one time. So basically you go just go use it and you're making 10 d8 damage. Sounds nice, sounds cool, yeah? Yeah. But if you go and uh, use this call lighting spell, then you create this little circle and it will do damage. So we can upcast it up to level 6 to make from 6 to 60 damage for 6d10. But most importantly, you will keep concentration and you can go and cast it every round. So basically you just go and do it one more time, one more time, and every time it will be level 6 spell. It's just like broken and super cool spell to use. Additionally, after you cast in any spell, so for example in call lighting, you will get, and you get it actually from level 1, this Tempestuous Magic Flight, so you can go and fly away from your enemies. That's like your main idea of your character. I forgot just to tell it on the level 3 fight. So you can transform your enemies into ships, just like that. You see this beautiful ship. And while they're ships, you can go and create or destroy water, for example. When you're creating water, enemies become wet. And what does it mean? Wet will prevent enemies from burning and will give resistance to fire damage. So basically you can go and cast this create watcher on yourself if you need resistance to fire damage. But they will be vulnerable to cold and lighting damage and that's what we need. So we're doing this create watcher and look, what means vulnerable? It means you will take twice as much damage from certain damage type. And that's why creating water just be before you cast in this cold lighting or chain lighting, for example, is like a really great idea to do. So you still can use uh, like lighting bolt. It's uh, this large bolt that's going through almost wall map you see in the straight line and damaging every creature. You still can use shocking gasp and now it's doing 3d8 damage. It's really nice stuff. And again, you can use, for example, twin spell and use the shocking gasp two times in one turn. Or you can use it as distance spell so you can cast it in the long distance. So it was melee spell and now it's range spell. You still got your cantrips and you can have this cone of cold which doing from 8 to 64 damage in a cone and you can combine it with other cone magic, do some icy surfaces, you know, create some water and when you create your water you just go and use this cone of cold to freeze this water. Then when you freeze this water, you can again unfreeze it with Fire Bolt, and now it's doing 3d10 damage. And maybe there's two creatures on this icy surface, so you can go and use your Twin Spell. So possibilities are basically endless. But let me show how to play it in action and how it will look in the late game. So most useful metamagic will be Quickened Spell to cast 
your spells as a bonus action and it costs 3 sorcery points. This means you can use it 4 rounds in a row. That's why I recommend to stick with uh, 12 sorcery points and not using them to create spell slots. So just before the fight, if it's possible, you need to have a mage who can cast Haste on yourself. Because if you cast Haste on yourself by yourself, you will keep concentration on this spell. And you can use your call lighting to concentrate on it. And yeah, you can cast Hust on the first turn of the battle. It's like more smart idea. But if you know the battle <laughs> will happen, just cast it a little bit before the battle and then go enter the fight. So basically you can cast it before you engaging in combat and attacking your enemies. So as this type of Dark Ursh, you got bonus action as Hust. And what you basically want to do is to create water around your enemies first to make them wet. So I see most important <laughs> enemies over here. We're creating water and making them wet. Just like that, with level 1 spell slot. Now they're wet for 3 turns and we will use cold lighting upcasted to level 6. Or vice versa, you can use this chain lighting. If you like it, but our actual bread and butter spell is this cold lighting. So upcasted to level 6, we're doing from 6 to 60 damage, but now First of all, it ignores resistance. Second of all, it's doing double damage. So let's just use and cast this. Just like that. As you can see, 68 damage just with one spell. And while it sounds like, oh, cool, we can decide what we need to do now. If we are in danger, we can use uh, magic flight and just fly away. So we just engage the fight. We don't have any movement, but we can definitely fly away easily. Or we can use this quicken spell and cast call lighting one more time just make sure not to press on this call lighting here because you will have level zero spell which requires zero spell slots while you're keeping concentration on it over here and yeah it's upcasted so just like that we're doing one more time and <laughs> now we just destroyed this dude just like that when we attacked we can use the storm fury as reaction to just throw away enemies just like that. And as you can see, we succeed in our concentration checks. We can continue casting it every turn. And from this turn, we can basically just use Skull Lighting on this dude one time. And as you can see, we're doing damage around ourselves. <laughs> so we can move a little bit, just a little bit. And cast it one more time to destroy this imp with more damage. And yeah, again, we're using we can spell to cast it one more time, just like that. Just like crazy amounts of damage you can make, and just in single turn, and then just move for full movement speed away. We succeeded seven throw, and we can push him away with Storm Fury again. Just like that, we used only one spell slot for this fight. Only one spell slot. But we cast it around eight spells, and we can cast even more spells, and even a little bit more spells and all the spells of level 6 is just like crazy 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 stuff and uh, we got a lot of spells uh, if we need to use them more so it's like infinity magic build but i guess you want more evil build yeah so we start with the same stats we want this 16 constitution to keep our concentration going on 16 charisma for our main casting stat but right now we're changing everything a little bit so our charisma is used for our attack rolls and it's reused for your spells that require you to make attack roll. For example, when you use an ice knife, it's nice to have more charisma, to have more chances to hit it. And same goes for most of your spells, actually. But if you want a really evil Dark Urge build, go again with Elemental Adept Lighting on your fourth level. So on the fourth level, you already, instead of going into charisma, you pick an Elemental Adept Lighting. Then you go up to level 5 and gain in this Lighting Bolt spell. And finally, on level 6, you get this Coal Lighting, our bread and butter concentration spell, with additional class features that doing more damage. So on level 6, instead of going more into Sorcerer, you go and pick your subclass. And our subclass of choice will be Cleric and especially Tempest Domain Cleric. First of all, we got Wrath of the Storm, so we can do this opportunity attack with our reaction to inflict more damage. We can pick Guidance, nice cantrip, and create destroy water. But most importantly, we want to have this cleric on level 2 on level 8. So level 8, we get in this awesome subclass future, Destructive Wrath, and we can use this channel divinity charge to deal maximum damage with our lighting. So we're definitely picking this cleric. And with this combination of spellcaster, you can unlock new spell slots of level 5, even on level 9. But right now we want to finish our sorcerer to get more sorcery points, basically. 
So pick same spells what you picked earlier on level 8. Most importantly, we're getting our feet. And now we're picking Warcaster feet. This will give us advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration. And as you already saw, concentration is a really important stat. And now level 9 Sorcerer will get us access to level 6 spell slot. But fun part, as Cleric we get access to this slot anyway. So if you want to get more levels in Sorcerer, all you will have is unlocked Chain Lighting spell on the last level. But instead we're going full into Cleric right now. So we're getting this level 6 spell slot. And yeah, in D&D it works in other way. You don't get this 6 level spell slot with 8 and uh, 3 Cleric. For Cleric spells just pick whatever, don't require any concentration. Because you want to use your concentration for other stuff. So spiritual weapon, just like whatever, whatever. And it's like prepared spells, so you know all the spells anyway, and you can prepare them before the fight. And why we're we going in four levels into cleric? Yeah, we're sacrificing some sorcery points, but most importantly, we're getting this feat. So now we can go and use our ability improvement and improve our constitution instead. So we don't need a high charisma because we're not using it for our attack rolls. And we better get more HP and more chances to succeed on our concentration saving throw. So we get in one cantrip. We don't care about this cantrip anyway. And just like that, we finished our super evil Dark Urge build. So look at this in action. But for this build, you don't need this like sorcerer items. And that's how your final build will look like. It will be have 21 AC from Dexterity, Shield and Armor. And it's medium armor and you get this proficiency from picking Cleric subclass basically. So crazy AC, you cast Haste on yourself by your magic casters and just go into the battle. So strategy is <laughs> the same, but right now instead of being like really weak sorcerer, you're getting 23 AC getting a lot of actions you can basically just create a watcher on this guys then get your coal lighting upcasted to level six and cool part when you cast it you will prompt it with this stuff and you can use destructive breath so when you cast any lighting spell and you get it from level two cleric already you will inflict maximum damage instead just look at this so we just made maximum damage to these guys and right now we can use quicken spell one more time to cast this one more time level six spell just like that so two turns and this guy's kind of dead right now it's a lot harder to attack us because we got really high armor class so that's helping helping keeping concentration a lot and even this cool dude we can use our reactions to <laughs> inflict more damage to him and yeah Succeeding saving throws a lot easier right now. And as you can see, to succeed saving throw, we need difficulty class 10. And on this level, we're getting plus 4 for, from proficiency, plus 4 from constitution modifier. So we need to roll at least 2 on the dice, and we got 2 attempts to roll it. So it's like really hard to break our concentration with this build. And we're using lighting to just inflict some damage to him. And yeah, because we are like protected from uh, lighting, we got resistance to it, we can cast it on ourselves, we don't care too much, just like that. Because we can keep our concentration most of the time, so we can cast it on himself, him one more time, we can use this quicken spell again, we just run around, so that's, <laughs> that's our strategy, run around, hold lightings and destroy everyone nearby. Just like that, with high armor class, hard to hit, easy to keep your concentration, just crazy amounts of damage and every turn you cast at least two lightings. And yeah, you can create even more water to make even more electrified water if you need to. So <laughs> I hope you will have a lot of fun with this Storm Sorcerer build with Dark Urge. But if you want more different builds, go watch this playlist on the screen right now. I got builds for every class and subclass or I will have it soon. See you in the next videos.